A great looking dining room table doesn't have to be bought from the store. I'm going to show you how you can build one using an old door. This is the door I'm going to use. It's going to make up the top of my table. She looks a little bit rough now, but once I clean it up, it'll look mint. Now the standard height for a table is 750 millimetres. Now the thickness of my door is 40 millimetres, so I'm going to take 40 off the 750, that gives me 710. Now this board that I've cut here is 710 high. The width of my door is 810 wide, so I've also cut this to 810 wide across here. This is going to be our pattern for our legs. Now I've ruled a line from corner to corner. I'm using this Rimu here for our legs. Now the dimensions of this are 80 millimetres by 80 millimetres. So from our centre line, I've ruled 40 millimetres from either side and that there is going to be a pattern for our legs. So this template has given us the exact length and end shape of our legs. Okay, we're going to take our leg, we're just going to put it on our outer mark, lay that down, just make sure you've got plenty of length to play with and let's just mark underneath on the board onto our leg. So that there is the exact shape we're going to cut on the drop saw for our leg. Right, I've just marked the other end of our leg. Next thing we need to do is mark where our other leg intersects this leg. So from our marks of our board, let's just rule those up. Now, on this join here, I'm going to half check the legs out, so that means they're going to sit over top of each other and they're going to end up finishing flush. So the thickness of my leg is 80 millimetres, so I'm going to rebate 40 millimetres out of this leg and 40 millimetres out of the other leg, and they're going to sit over top of each other nice and tight. So I'm just going to mark out 40 millimetres, and I'm going to chop 40 millimetres out of the top. Now you just want to join up your two lines. Now it's this piece here that we need to take out. Right, we're just about ready to cut out our rebate. What I'm going to do, here's a little tip for you. I'm just going to put my ruler up against our mark going to use our knife, put a score on there just before I start cutting. Okay, I'm just going to kick us off on the outer lines only using my handsaw. This is a nice little sharp tenon saw. This is going to ensure I get a really fine cut. Right, now you can finish this off making a few more cuts using your handsaw or if you're feeling confident you could use a circular saw, setting it to the right depth and just take care. Rightio, all my fins are cut. Next thing we want to do, now just make sure you've got a really nice sharp chisel. It's going to make the world a difference. And let's just go on our line there. Flip that over and just do exactly the same on the other side. And when you're using chisel, just make sure you've got your flat part of your chisel on your line and the bevel of your chisel facing out. Now we've set all that up with our chisel. Let's just gently knock all these over. And then we'll just finish that up with our chisel. Now, just come from each side, that way you're not going to blow it out. And because I've got a nice sharp chisel here, let's just finish that off by hand. Righto, that's looking pretty good. Time to cut the shape on the ends of our legs. Right, the rebate and the legs are all cut. Let's just see how she's looking. Absolutely beautiful. Right, we're going to park these aside and bring in our door. Okay, I've paint scraped it and I've given it a good sand. Let's flip this over and bring in our legs. Now we just need to fix our legs to our door. So what I'm going to do is screw a 60 by 20 piece of timber to our door here and then have an L section coming up and then I'm going to fix a bolt through our upstand into our leg that's going to support everything. I've cut up a 60 by 20 that's going to sit hard on the tabletop and I've made a 90 by 20 which is going to sit on top of the 60 and I've cut a 45 degree just follow the same line as the table legs. Now I've pre-drilled the holes and I'm going to fix these two together. 
Right, let's put a little bit of PVA on our upstand and take our 60 by 20. I've got our screws sitting in there ready to roll. Make sure that's nice and flush on the end. Okay, we've made our bracket up. We're going to attach this to our door. Rightio. Let's just mark a centre line all the way down. And we just want to pre drill a hole so it aims about the centre of each one of these tongue and groove boards. Throw a little bit of PVA on the bottom. What's known in the trade as a a liberal amount. Get that flush with our ends. Now you just want to make the same L bracket for the other end. Rightio, our legs are sitting there nice and lovely, all flush with the end. So what we need to do now is drill a hole through the centre of the legs, through our bracket, all the way through our legs and I'm going to drill a 13 millimetre hole to take a 12 mil bolt. Okay I've clamped my leg to my bracket and I'm just going to do a 3 mil pilot hole first. Now we're working with pretty hard timber here so just make sure all your drill bits are always really sharp. I'm using a 12 millimetre galvanised coach bolt. Throw your nut and washer on. Now we don't need to do it up super tight, just finger tight will do for now. Now just repeat the same for all your other sides. Right, to make this table nice and solid, I'm going to add a rail that goes in between our two legs. To get the length of our rail, we're just going to measure in between our two legs where it's fixed to the tabletop. Right, these little bad boys here are our dowels. These go all the way through our legs into our rail. So I'm now going to cut a hole through our legs to take the dowel. I'm using a 32 millimetre dowel, so I've got a 32 millimetre spade bit. Now when we drill through, I'm gonna come halfway from each side, that's gonna avoid any splitting. Now to get the centre of our legs, we're just gonna put our ruler in between our two leg points, and just rule a line. The next thing we need to do is drill a hole in the end of our rail. Now to get the centre, this is exactly what we're going to do. Drill a line just from corner to corner, boom, let's just punch a hole in there. Now we want to go in there about 50 millimetres, here's a little tip for you. Now if you measure from the flat part of your spade, 50 millimetres, and let's just throw a little bit of tape there. So as soon as I start drilling and I come up to my tape, I know bang, I'm right on the mark. Next step is cutting across into the end of our dowel. To do this, we're going to use a tenon saw. The reason for cutting this slot is because I'm going to slip a wedge into those little cut marks. And so once that's gone through the hole in the legs, that's going to form a really nice tight fit and a really good detail. I know I've got a 32 millimetre dowel, so I'm going to come 16 millimetres to get to the centre. Let's just rule a straight line, measure up 16 millimetres, and let's just get 90 degrees to that. And I'm going to cut back about 40 millimetres along the length of the dowel, so we'll just put a nice straight line on either side, and we'll just follow that with our tenon saw. Just cut my dowel to length. Now I know that I'm 50 millimetres into my rail. My leg is 80 millimetres thick, and I've got about 15 millimetres hanging on the outside here that I can chop off later. Now here's a little tip for you. I've cut a 32 millimetre hole, and I've got a 32 millimetre dowel. So when I fill this full of glue, and I put the dowel in, the dowel is more than likely is going to pop out because there's no allowance for air in there. So a little tip here. Let's just take our dowel and let's just cut a few slots. 
Beauty, that's not only going to allow a fair bit of grip inside the hole, it's also going to allow any air bubbles stuck in that hole to come out. Everything is set. We've cut our rails, our legs, our dowels. Now, let's take apart our legs, set them aside and start mixing up some glue. So glue your legs together and then lift them back into place. So just reassemble your legs to your L bracket and tighten them up. So just wipe off any excess glue before it dries. So we're also going to need some glue on the inside of our rail. Just before you put that in, just make sure you don't have any dust in there. Just give that a little tickle up. Lovely. So let's just sit our dowel in there, but we, want it. we don't want it to go all the way through. Just leave that so it's just sitting shy of it. Repeat the same for the other end. Okay, so let's sling our rail in. And we're just putting our rail vertical. Now don't worry about it at this stage, about getting it all the way. Now, quick little tip, our cross that we've put on the end, let's just make sure that's sitting parallel all with our legs so it forms a nice, beautiful straight cross running in the same line as our legs. Now that's looking pretty good. Now we need to cramp this up and I'm going to use a ratchet tie down to do this. So let's just gently tighten that up so we can see the glue oozing out between the rail and the leg. That's looking pretty sharp. Now let's just Pretty good there. Now, force a little bit of glue through the sides of that cross. I'm going to take a nice long wedge that we've made out of Rimu. And we've got two little wedges to go on either side of that one. This is going to form a beautiful little cross on the end and also set that dowel in there nice and tight. Sweet. She's all glued up, everything's set. Now we're going to just let this glue dry for about 24 hours and then we'll end up chopping that off. Before the glue dries, wipe off any excess. Now I've got a nice sharp handsaw here, just a fine panel saw is all you need. And just real gently. Now just give this wee little tickle up with the sander. Rightio, we're just about finished our table. Now, I've got this 60 by 20. I've cut this down out of an old weatherboard I found lying around, and I've put a slight round on the edge of it. That's just gonna create a nice soft edge when we're leaning on the edge of the table. Now, before we start nailing this on, we're just gonna evenly space out our nails to make it look nice and pretty. I'm just gonna pre-drill this timber. You know what, it's pretty old. It's been sitting around for a while. If I put a nail straight into that, it's gonna split. Let's just run a bead of glue all the way down. Make sure we're flush with the end of our table. Cool. Now just make sure you take off any excess glue. And the reason for that, once we put our oil or stain on, if the PVA is still on there, it'll show up as a white patch later on. So it's quite important to get that looking good now. Sweet, she's starting to look mint. Right, I'll give it a sand, take it off any pencil marks, any rough edges. Now, I'm just gonna give it a wee little dust down before we start putting on our oil. That's looking mint. I'm ready for a feed, easy as.